<sighs> Demon Slayer. I wanted to like this one. I should have liked it. It's a shonen, has cool visuals, an interesting concept, and a wonderful first episode. And sure, it might not be groundbreaking when you get into it, but that's fine. My standard for liking shonen anime aren't that high. I mean, My Hero Academia is my favorite anime of all time, and I enjoy shows like Beatless and Handshakers despite their flaws. Just give me some likable characters and a half-decent story, and I'm good. But Demon Slayer, I ended up dropping around episode 8. Though I was convinced to give it another try because everyone on Amina was yelling at me and telling me I was wrong. And I did like parts of it once I picked it back up. But then Zenitsu showed up and I hated him, so I dropped it again. Though a few months later, the channel Divide Music came out with some amazing songs inspired by the show, so I figured I'd give it one more try. And I got to the end, somehow. Now, to be fair, Demon Slayer is not all bad. It has some really cool parts, and by the end, I actually wanted more. But it also has some very major flaws. This video will contain a couple spoilers specifically related to episode 19, though nothing major. I will also be spoiling one of Naruto's early fights if people care about that, though I doubt anyone still does. Alright, so let's get into this. The show starts off with Tanjiro fighting his family killed by demons, the only exception being his sister. Nezuko, though, she ended up being turned into a demon. Tanjiro wants to find a way to turn Nezuko back, so he joins the Demon Slayers to do so. The overall premise here is interesting, though a bit on the simple side. Tanjiro wants to rescue his sister and has to become strong enough to defeat the demons. Now, a simple concept is not necessarily bad, and it isn't bad here. But I feel that that's how I could describe a lot of the show. Simple. And I feel like that hinders how good the show could be. When I watch an action show like this, I want something I can really dive into that's entertaining on more than just a surface level. Like give me some interesting ideas to explore, or a clash of ideals, or nuanced character motivations. That's what I really like seeing in a show. And while a show can be enjoyable without all those aspects, it's like a shallow sort of enjoyment. I want something richer. But there's one aspect of the show I really do like, and that is Tanjiro himself. There are a lot of times when watching, I could just ignore any of my issues with the show because I was enjoying seeing Tanjiro fight and struggle. In a way, he's your typical shonen main character guy. He doesn't give up, he wants to save his family, and he is really just pure hearted. But this is perfectly fine with me. I like shonen anime because of characters like this, so Tanjiro works wonderfully in the role. And one of the things I really appreciate with Tanjiro is his empathy for the demons. He feels sorry for them, wants to help them if he can, and this might be because his sister is a demon, but whatever the case, he always wants to see the demons as the people that they once were. And that gives me even more reason to want to root for Tanjiro. But I also appreciate that he's not afraid to kill demons when it comes down to it. When they are a threat to innocent humans, he will fight and kill them. Sure, if peace is an option, he'll take it, but he knows that killing is sometimes the best option. And the killing and overall violence is one of the things that Demon Slayer definitely does unlike most shonen. And just, it's very violent. Every battle is life or death. And while this does raise the stakes for the battles, it also doesn't work all that well because the main characters have plot armor. Because we know that Tanjiro and Nezuko and Zenitsu and I forget that other guy's name, all are going to live. Sure, they might be beat up a bit, but they're not going to die. So we know that somehow, some way, they'll find a way out, which definitely takes away a lot of the stakes of the battles. Now, I'm not saying this show has to get rid of all plot armor to be good. Not at all. But it needs to know that we know that there is plot armor when it is trying to make the stakes for a battle interesting. But back to the characters, and this is where I was really let down with the show. Yes, Tanjiro was great, but the side characters were unremarkable at best and super annoying at worst. Nezuko is a little more than a damsel in distress who never says anything. And Zenitsu was really annoying with all of his screaming, and when he did calm down, it's like he just won the girls. Like, I want to like him. And I could see myself liking Zenitsu down the road. He has a lot of interesting background, and they could explore that. But if every time he opens his mouth, I want him to just shut up, it doesn't matter what potential he might have. Inosuke is similar, though I feel like he's gotten some self-awareness by the end of the anime, so maybe I'll like him more when the story continues. But still, these characters being annoying really hurt the show. As I said, all I want in the shonen is likable characters in a half-decent story. 
and when the supporting characters are so annoying that I hate them all, well, the whole show just falls apart. Story-wise, it's kind of basic. Tanjiro goes around fighting demons so he can get their blood to return Nezuko to normal. And while that is his motivation, it feels like that is so much in the background that it doesn't matter to the story. The story is basically just his fights with the demons. This goes back to what I said before about the show being simple. You have the battles, and while they are somewhat exciting, there's no real depth or nuance to them. Compare this to Naruto, where nearly every battle was a clash of ideals that represented something more than if the characters would live or die. Or for a more modern example, look at My Hero Academia. The reason I love the fights so much in My Hero isn't because they're flashy or look cool, but because of the way the battles are used to tell the story and drive the characters forward. For example, you have Todoroki's big battle in Season 2, which was so important for him as a person, or the way we see Bakugo's mindset during his battles against Deku. I don't want to say more because this isn't in my hero video, but these are far from the only examples in that show. And I hope you'll get my point without getting into the details there, and why Demon Slayer's battles feel so shallow in comparison. Another issue is how the power system here really isn't explained. The Demon Slayers can use their breathing techniques to use sort of magic attacks. Each character has their own breathing techniques, like Tanjiro with water breathing, Zenitsu with thunder breathing, and so on. My issue with Demon Slayer is that we never understand the logic behind the breathing, or what it means for what a character can and cannot do. This makes the powers feel very hand-waving, and robs the battles of some of the power that they could have. I looked into this a bit more in the wiki to try and understand what characters could do what, and it feels like there is an explanation in the manga at least, but I still want that from the anime. One of the things I like seeing in action shows like this is seeing how the characters are able to use their techniques to overcome their foes. Going back to Naruto again, one of the coolest moments early on was during the battle against Zabuza, when Naruto was able to combine a Shadow Clan Jutsu with his Transformation Jutsu to get a sneak attack in by disguising himself as a Shuriken. This was really cool because it let Naruto do something within the bounds of the powers he had, but in a way that we would never expect, and it let him outsmart his far stronger opponent. Well, with Demon Slayer, we really don't have this. They just say they're using a breathing technique, and then there's some cool animation. Though, to be fair to Demon Slayer, if there is a part where it stands out story-wise, it's how it portrays the demons. While they are villains for the most part, and I did not write the rest of this paragraph, while they are still villains, for the most part, there is still a level of humanity within them, and I enjoy seeing how they have been shaped as demons and what they are after, what they are trying to reclaim. I especially like the one who is after a family, and though he did not know how to get his family, he tried to form one just the same. It is very interesting to see how their desires have been twisted by them becoming a demon. I also have to talk about the animation for the show because it was quite good. Sometimes. Demon Slayer is done by Ufotable, who are mostly known for their work on Fate and how they can make their battles look amazing with their special effects. And they do this here as well and have some really cool camera movements too, but a lot of the non-action scenes are very boring from an animation perspective. There's a ton of still frames or just minimally animated frames where you only see the character's mouth moving. And this holds the show back. Now you may say that scenes like this don't matter animation-wise for an action show, and yes, to a point you're right. But it's another aspect that holds back the show, keeps it from being as good as it could be. Compare this to anything by Kyoto Animation and you'll see how the animation can add so much life to a scene where there might not be that much actually happening. Or if you want another action show as your example, look at a certain scientific railgun. Even in the more ordinary moments, there's a lot of character movement or expressions which helps bring the scene and the characters to life. Okay, to finish off this video, the last topic I want to talk about is episode 19. This episode and the battle during it were insanely hyped, so I was both excited and skeptical going into it. Though after watching it, I have to say, it was a good fight. It was Demon Slayer at its best, and I feel that I would be wrong not to praise it. But it also shows where Demon Slayer falls short. The scene shows Tanjiro at his limit, about to die against a foe far more powerful than he has any hope of defeating. And in his final moments, he remembers his father's dance and breathing, and he is able to use that to turn his water breathing into fire breathing and cut through his foe's threads. Then Nezuko wakes up using her own blood demon art to protect Tanjiro and allows him to deliver the final blow. Considering the bond between Tanjiro and Nezuko is at the core of the show, 
This really made the battle great. The music here is so cool too, with it starting off as really somber piano music, but then turning into a really strong, powerful song later on. And the right part of the song is used at the right part of the scene, while still always being the same song that just tied it all together. This was a wonderful use of music for the show. And the animation here was wonderful with all the special effects of camera movement. Again, this is Demon Slayer at its best. But while it is great, don't get me wrong, it has some problems. The main one being how Tanjiro and Nezuko just happen to pull these techniques out of nowhere without any inclination of knowing how to do it, and they just happen to use it to defeat this enemy that they had no hope of beating otherwise. Nezuko, I can sort of see this because she's a demon, it makes sense that she would have some sort of demon art, but it really is a stretch for Tanjiro. In order for this to work, Tanjiro had to, in his last moments, when he was the most stressed, happen to remember the one thing from his childhood that could counter the demon. So, a lot of logical leaps here. I'm guessing we'll learn more about fire breathing later on, and maybe they will justify it some, but it definitely felt rather forced to throw all that into the big moment. And then my next issue is that the attack didn't even work since the demon cut his own head off before Tanjiro would land his attack. Again, something else that came out of nowhere, and it really depowered the awesome moment between Tanjiro and Nezuko. And going back, rewatching episode 19 to make this video, there is no indication that that was a thing that had happened. It looked just like Tanjiro used a sword to cut off the demon's head. So yeah, it was cool and definitely hit me on an emotional level, but I don't feel it deserves all the praise that it gets. Which, honestly, that's how I feel about the show itself. Though, even for all my issues, once I got to the end of the show, I wanted more. Demon Slayer may be a standard shonen with a lot of flaws, and it will never be among my favorites. But at its core, it still is a type of story I like. Tanjiro trying to save his sister, fighting evil along the way, with the help of those he cares about. And as much as I could rant about where it falls short, I want more. Maybe I'll drop it partway through the movie or season 2 or whatever it gets. But I have heard the manga gets better from here, so I'm optimistic. So that is my review of Demon Slayer. Let me know what you thought, if you disagree with me, which you probably will, but oh well. Thank you for watching, though, and I will talk to you next time.